Midwest Plainsman Podcast. And uh, I appreciate everyone uh, who comes and joins in on a regular basis. Today, I am joined by uh, Iowa native singer-songwriter Skirt Cartcart. And uh, Scott has been around for a while. Uh, and once I started listening to his music, I definitely knew that uh, I need to get him on the show with us. So appreciate you taking time out to come join me. I appreciate you uh, having me. Not a problem there. Now, uh, let's get let's just get right into this. Uh, so, what uh, what got your start into country music? Oh, it's been a long time, I suppose. My, <clears throat> I grew up, you know, my parents in the days where that we had those giant uh, those giant council stereos, you know, with the with the record players and the eight tracks and the stereos. Yep. And we always used to listen to Kenny Rogers and Ann Murray and Mickey Gilly and all that good stuff. So, uh, you know, I kind of grew up with it. Well, I was going to say, yeah, I also had one of those myself. And uh, yep. <laughs> at the time, man, one, those were the best sounding stereo systems that was out there. <laughs> they sounded, they, you know what? They still sound great. I still got our old one. Yeah, and, and I still turn it. I there's still records still play on it. I mean, it's fantastic. Yep, is uh, you know, there's nothing like the sound on vinyl. I uh, I agree. Is I don't know. It, over the years, uh, even back as a kid, I had vinyl, and everything got switched over. But now that vinyl is actually making a strong comeback, and a lot of artists are now uh, going back to recording on vinyl. Well, you know, nobody has CDs anymore, it seems like. Um, everything, you stream everything anymore. Yep. And so uh, vinyl was a kind of a glorious fad that people had that, you know, you actually had to physically go over and and, and, and flip the record over and, and lay the needle down to it, you know, and, and that was that's kind of what makes it an adventure just to listen to music on top of it. So I'm glad yeah. that it's coming back. I'm glad that vinyl is making a, a comeback. Um, I haven't, I'm working on an EP. I would love to put out on vinyl um, and just, and just to have some on vinyl and sell at the shows, you know? Yep. Well, and I even did some research. Uh, there used to be only a handful of pressing studios that actually made vinyl uh i think we're down to just the one now there's not many if there is i mean and maybe maybe that's maybe that'll be coming back too um but you know it's it's pretty expensive yeah the cost so, is uh not what it used to be back years ago i'll tell you that no, no. uh yeah. and, and the quality the quality of recording is a lot better I, what i really like about records are you know it was kind of a one take wonder what you what you got is what you heard in the studio right uh, and that's that's kind of what i like about it so now what actually got you started into music uh, was it your upbringing or um you know i'm not really sure i was no my my dad was a banker and my and my mom worked at the grocery store in a little small town manson iowa um and i I played football and, and basketball and, and baseball and all that stuff growing up. And then one day my, uh, Phil Lackle, he was, a, he was a dear friend of our families and he, uh, he was also the junior high band teacher. And, uh, he said he wanted me to play drums. So I started playing drums and, hmm. and I learned how to play drums and I ended up, I was a three time stage jazz band drummer and I ended up went to college to play drums and then one day I just was like, you know what? I'm just, I'm so tired of, I don't want to play anymore. So I kind of fell out of the music loop and started working and had babies and, 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 and raised my children. And it was shortly after 2001, after 9-11, I had a buddy in Florida and he said, uh, Hey, and he was stuck, you know, nobody was flying anywhere during that time. And he was stuck down there. And he says, Hey, when I get home, he's let's, let's buy guitars and, and let's learn how to play guitar. And I said, okay, and I guess the rest is history. Here I am. I never thought I'd be a full-time musician, but 
when I decided to do that. But, you know, here I am. So music, I always say music found me again. Nice. Well, yeah, I had a, well, yeah, similar upbringing. Uh, just all through school, I wound up uh, playing trumpet all through, all through grade school and all through high, junior and high school. Yep. And that's pretty much what got me going. Yeah, I, it's you know, bands always band is a good thing in, in school. My uh, my son is at Iowa Central right now. He's twenty years old. He's a he's a sophomore at Iowa Central, and he's going to transfer to Iowa State here in the fall. And he he wants to play in the marching band. So that's it. He wants to be a he wants to be a band director. Uh, so that's I'm I'm proud of him for that. You know, and wanting to do that. And cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. Uh, well, I'm... My older brother played for uh, Iowa State back in the day under uh, Uncle Earl. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they said that. They said that. Uh, I'm a Hawkeye fan, right? Both of my kids go to uh, go to Iowa or going to Iowa State. So, um, uh, I said, "Well, I'll wear a black and gold T-shirt that says I'm with the band." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that, that'll count as well, man. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm proud of them, you know, and I, I'm glad music is in there, although they didn't know anything other than music anyway, so they didn't have much of a choice. Okay, so I noticed that uh, uh, the latest that came out was that uh, you were gaining popularity in the country music uh, industry. And, yep. Uh, so what, uh, what brought that about? I mean, was it, uh, people just, uh, giving their feedback and, or is it, uh, higher ups that we're noticing? Well, you know, I'm not really sure what it is. It's just that, uh, I was always one of those guys that would go out and play in front of a crowd. And I wanted to make sure that, uh, every time, every time somebody left a gig, they were like, Wow. I want to go see him again, you know, and I, I was, I worked radio a long time ago when I was in high school, I started a radio station at KTLB Twin Lakes over here by Rockwell city. And it got sold to a bigger hundred thousand watt radio station um, by the name of K97 in Fort Dodge. Oh, okay. And, and I, and I worked for them when I was, when I was in high school yet, you know, and so I, I learned how to kind of work a crowd, um, when I was doing remotes and going to do dances and stuff like that with, with, with the, the owners of the radio station, uh, we'd go to Owatonna, Minnesota. And so I, you know, I use that a lot in still to this day, as far as working a crowd and, and, and seeing what kind of music that they, uh, you know, what, what they want. I play a little bit of everything. I, my genre is country music. Um, I love the way the new writing style is of country music. Um, I fell in love with that when I was in Nashville. We played down in Nashville um, for we opened for a guy named Jonathan Singleton, um, mm, yep. and and he was one of the most humble, most people, most incredible guys there were. And and he talked about a lot about writing, and, and it was just a really it was a really neat deal to do that. It's at the Commodore Grill in in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and I, I really love the way that they are uh, structuring the songs and the way they're writing songs and the way they're using their lyrics anymore. And, and it, that just kind of started fascinating me. So I started writing music one day and I was like, Oh, I might be able to do some of this, you know? So I just kept, I kept, uh, I kept on the trail and I kept playing gigs out live. And, and every time I wanted to play, I wanted to play like it was my last show I was ever going to play. So, uh, and I just build a following and it just uh, kind of keeps going, you know, which is great. I've been very blessed. I've, I worked for FedEx for 20 years um, while my babies were growing up and, and played music part time. Mm -hmm. And then after, after Owen graduated high school, I finally said, you know what, it's time for dad to go play. And, uh, and I decided to go out and, and be a full-time musician and boy, I wish I would have done it 20 years ago, <laughs> but uh <laughs> I'm sure enjoying it. You know, I'm very blessed and humbled and it's just been a, an incredible time. It's, it's our time to give back to people now. So yeah, after COVID, everybody wants live music again and, and the live music business and, and being a musician is just booming right now. 
Oh, that's good to hear. I know that, uh, yeah, back in the day uh, when it came to artists trying to find their place in music, it was always a it was always a struggle for them. But now the music industry has changed so dramatically that yeah. it's actually become easier for artists now because they can just uh, put their music out on social media and get uh, noticed that way right? and then gain the popularity and being heard and uh, just making life a lot easier. Yeah. Social media is a great thing. And it, it, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful tool to use, but you still got to go out and beat the streets and you got to put on a live show. Mm -hmm. And, and if you can't, if, if you got one of the best singers in the world and all he does is sit up there and sing, or all she does is just sit up there and sing, you know, people are like, uh, well, yeah, the person's really good, you know, but if you put on a show and become an inner, I had a, I had a good musician friend of mine, Chris Carr, tell me one time, he says, we're all musicians. Now you have to decide whether you want to be an entertainer or not. Right. And when you become that entertainer, that's when you that's when things really start moving for you in a different direction. Did you ever think that uh, your music would be gaining popularity like this? No, <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Uh, you know, when you write a song, I guess I write from real life. I don't, most of my songs are all real life, you know, like a uh, stiff drink. I was, I was in a, I was in a FedEx truck on a gravel road parked one day. And I got a text message from my dear friend, Jesse Wilson. And, and he says, Hey man, you get any ideas for, you got any ideas for a, uh, for a song? And it was one of those days where I had a Tide bottle explode all over the back of my FedEx truck. Oh shoot. And, and, uh, and then and shortly after that, a kitty litter thing exploded all over the back of my truck and fell off the, off the shelf. And I, I was just kind of having, I was kind of having a shitty day to be honest with you. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, no, I don't know about a, about an idea for a song, Jesse, but I sure could use a stiff drink. <laughs> and it was about 14 and a half minutes later oh, via text message, we wrote stiff drink together. So, uh, you know, it just kind of comes, right? Yep. Cool. All right. Oh, uh, in fact, uh, well, as we... Yeah, as you're talking about that one, that's actually one of the videos we're going to be playing this afternoon for everybody. Uh, and I'll get that queued up. So let's just get uh, right into it. And yeah. this is called Stiff Drink.
That is a really darn good video. I got to admit. I like it. Thank you. My uh, my good friend, uh, Tim Fox from TFC Photography, uh, did that. We uh, It was uh, just one afternoon. I got a bunch of friends. Went to Blackhawk Lake in Lakeview, Iowa and did that. Jesse and I did that. That was a fun day. Cool. Now, Blackhawk Lake. Uh, let's see. Is that in my neck of the woods up here in Waterloo? No, it's over down here by, oh, kind of down by the Carroll area. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Lakeview is where it's at, is, is the town. Yep. Okay. I wasn't sure. I, I have base. I know where Rathbun is and Let's, Spirit Lake and Red yep. Rock. Yep. No, this is Blackhawk Lake. It's not Blackhawk. You guys are in Blackhawk County, right? Yep. So, yeah, it's Blackhawk Lake, which is, uh, um, and it's, so it's East Sac is what the community school oh, district is gotcha. there. It used to be Lake U Auburn, but yeah, it was a, that was a fun day. And a bunch of a bunch of our friends, you know, that was just a, a random weekday too that we did that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, let's see. Now, are you currently working on anything new? Yeah, always. Um, we just well, I just released a brand new song um, that Cody Hicks, my friend Cody Hicks and, and Jesse Wilson and I wrote together. Um, it's called Bad Decisions. Um, we released it on video only, um, not streaming uh, as of yet, but we did a live version of it at Forte Studios. So it was just me and Mike and guitar. Uh, we went in the studio and then we recorded that. Oh. Um and that's called bad decisions. Um, so we just got that done. Now we're going to go back into the studio and do a full band version of it. And and we're going to read, but, but the live will be able to be streamed here soon. Uh, anywhere you stream music. And then we're going to do a, uh, and then we'll do a single also of it. Um, we just got done. We recorded a, Cody Hicks just recorded a brand new song called um, Pouring Whiskey Over My Heart. That's one of our songs we wrote together. He went down to Nashville to uh, Saxman Studios mm -hmm. and uh, and recorded down to Saxman Studios. And that's making pretty good waves right now. He just finally got that released out uh, as his first single for his new album. So um, I got a lot of songs that we wrote this year together. Um, you know, like Jesse Wilson or my, or, or Cody put out or I'm putting out, we kind of take turns doing them, you know, and, um, but it's, uh, I, I, I was in kind of a bad accident last June or last July, um, coming home from Ragbri one mm. night and, um, I've been writing a lot <laughs> because of that, I suppose. Uh, so Hopefully within the hopefully this year uh, we'll we'll have a new EP out or you know or a full length album. I haven't decided yet, but uh, yeah, lots of stuff going on. Excellent. As I say, I did see the video on YouTube for uh, Bad Decisions, the acoustic version. Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, and that's that's actually done really really well um, as far as views and, and stuff. Um, that that's a that was one of those songs, you know, we've always been pretty good at making bad decisions us men have. So uh, <laughs> we kind of, we kind of wrote it that way too. And uh, people seem to love it. Uh, you know, everything that we do is, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to do what I can do and, and have the following and the support that I do. Um, I, I never thought two years ago when I quit my full-time job at FedEx and being a full-time musician uh, that I'd go to, get to go to Broadway and play on Broadway and went to reroute in Las Vegas and play at Mandalay Bay. And, uh, you know, so that was, it's been, it's been an honor. And, you know, and I'm so, I, I sometimes I think back, I'm like, I get to do this for a living. I, you know, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't work to me. Uh, this is just uh, doing what I love. Right. Yeah. And it's just having fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And the people, the people that you meet, on the road and and uh, it's i i've met some of my best friends in the world that are now my best friends all through music you know so uh 
that's kind of a that's kind of an added bonus to it on top of doing what you love. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now, part of uh, this, I mean, the statement that you've got on your Facebook page is that uh, you're taking after Skinner, which is that I <laughs> approve of quite <laughs> tremendously. I mean, I love those guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, what uh, what influence uh, would you say has been the strongest with you as far as a uh, musician or performer goes? I mean, who's been your influence? Well, I always, I, you know, I grew up in the 80s and I'm 47 years old. I'm the old guy here, right? I, I, I'm getting old. And, and I, uh, I, you know, anywhere from 80s hair bands to uh, I grew up with with Leonard Skinner and and Molly Hatchet and and you know that music is untouchable and and will always have a place in my heart mm -hmm. and 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 in history period you know the Eagles and and listening to all that and then with the new country some of the new country you know like when when Chris Stapleton came out you know I knew about Chris um, as a songwriter beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. But I never knew that voice of his, right? And, and I, like I said, I never thought I was much of a singer. I was always just a guitar player and a backup singer. And then I decided to just kind of go out on my own and and do some solo stuff, you know. And I, that's when I started. And uh, I guess, I guess when I started, I you know, between a lot of cigarettes back in the day, I don't smoke anymore, but a lot of cigarettes back in the day, and probably some whiskey and. And yelling at Iowa Hawkeye games, I got this weird rasp in my voice when I <laughs> when when I sing, um, and, and people seem to love it. And I don't know really how that happened or when that happened. I always thought, no, I, you know, me as an artist, I'm always like, oh, I wish I could sing like this guy, or I wish I could sing like this guy. So you just got to kind of take uh, what I have and, and just with a grain of salt and and put it out there, and, and people seem to love it. So. I would say that's always my that's always kind of my cross between Chris Stapleton um, and uh, 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 Leonard Skinner, you know Molly Hatchet. I love some of that stuff too. So uh, I got a lot of I got a lot of influences. I, Eric Clapton's still my favorite guitar player. Um, you know, I was blessed to get to see him play in Nashville, Tennessee. That was awesome, um, and that. I always continue and always work on being a better me. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's my trade. I love playing guitar. You know, there's, there's been times in my life where I've been pretty alone and that's the only thing that's ever really gotten me through um, was, was my guitar. Um, so I, you know, I, I work on that constantly all the time. Cool. All right. We're going to do, uh, let's see, we're going to do the other one here right quick. Moonshine and Mason jars. Um, uh, what was the story behind this one? Um, this is just a song. Um, there ain't much, there ain't a video to it, but, um, if I was at a wedding. I played at a wedding for my brother's best friend and their, their koozie said, we go together like moonshine and mason jars. And I just started writing one day and that was kind of what I went with the hook and it ended up that way and moonshine and mason jars come out nice well i would say i've listened to a short clip of i wanted to wait until we played it here and uh this is also another good one uh that i know people are going to really love uh, these last two songs uh yeah i'm gonna be definitely adding that to my playlist for when i'm out doing weddings because I know that uh, people are going to love it. I'm sure to appreciate that. <laughs> All right. This was called Moonshine and Mason Jars. Some things just go better together Like strings on this guitar Neon lights and old dive bars Daddy's old pickup truck Starry nights, winding roads A bottle of the good stuff 
Must interrogate your head on my shoulder. Penny on the radio. Baby, I can't explain all the things that I'm feeling. If the Lord knows that I want you to know. Baby, I can't explain our reasons. It's just when you know what you know that you know. You and I in a love like ours. Feel like moonshine and mason jars. Oh, yeah. Moonshine and mason jars. Oh yeah Chasing fireflies on a hot summer night Spin the line like to the blues Moonlight dancing on the water Frogs chirping in the trees Bonfires hand me down on the texture It's amazing how we live for nights like this Baby, I can't explain all the things that I'm feeling. The good Lord knows that I want you to know. Baby, I can't explain all the reasons. It's just when you know, and you know, that you know. You and I in a love like ours Feel like old Johnny Mason jars Oh yeah Old Johnny Mason jars Oh yeah And I want you always by my side Baby, I can't explain all the things that I'm feeling The good Lord knows that I want you to know Baby, I can't explain all the reasons just when you know, and you know, and you know. You and I are love like dogs. Then I go shining bass and jars. Oh, yeah. Moon shining bass and jars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another really good song. Definitely. That last part of the song is rip, and I forgot. Jeremy Ober, my buddy Jeremy Ober, did that. He recorded the, uh, for Brutal Republic, he recorded that uh, guitar part on the end there. It took him 47 tries to get that just right the way he wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've I've listened in on some recording sections. I know what you guys go through. Oh, it, you know, you're never going to get it perfect, no matter how many times you try, and you always go back and second guess yourself, no matter what. You yeah, know, and and you finally got to say, okay, that's good. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I know. Most musicians will say that there's 
always one song on an album that they just didn't get right. And, but everybody else loves it. Yeah. But that, that's funny you say that. They screwed up. <laughs> Moonshine and Mason Jars is that song to me. Like when I when I played when I play uh, live with the band, uh, with the full band, that song just trucks. I mean, it sounds so good. But but then I listen to the recording and I'm like, it's it's a good recording. It's a great recording, but it's not quite how I envisioned it when I started it. Right. <laughs> yep, I know what that's like. We all have one of those. <laughs> yep. So now, uh, what have you got coming up on your schedule? Um, well, every this Friday I'm in Des Moines. Um, then I go from Des Moines at Shotgun Betty's in West Des Moines, Iowa, and then I go to um, Titanka, uh, which is clear up north by the Minnesota border, mm-hmm. on Saturday for a birthday, a 50th birthday party, I think is what it is. Um, they hired me a long time ago, and then my good friends with the Midwest MCMO, uh, Midwest Country Music Organization, they're playing in Okaboji that night too. Uh, Brad Morgan and and uh, and those guys. Um, but then I go down Sunday and I play a Sunday fun day at the Carroll Brewing Company. Um, and then the following weekend, I got to go to. I'm on the road. I do a writers round in Des Moines on Thursday. Um, and I got to be up with Steve Shetler from, um, from Steve Shetler media on his, he's doing a, a show in Sigourney, Iowa, where I got to come in there and play three of my songs for him. And it's at a live audience and stuff and it gets broadcasted live. So I'm looking forward to that. And, um, and then I'll be over by Bellevue, Iowa on that Saturday, um, at offshore resorts and, uh, and and playing and playing there, um, a lot of stuff coming up. I'm opening for Warren Ziders this summer uh, in a little in Manson, Iowa, um, which is going to be big uh, a big show for me. Um, just a, the schedule is packing in there, so that's good. I can't complain. Cool. No. Uh, now, if you ever get picked up by uh, iHeart out of Des Moines. Uh, if you go in to talk to him, uh, make sure you talk to Joel, because uh, uh, he's my neighbor from Prairie City. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's my hometown. And, All right, yeah. And so basically, uh, yeah, if you ever get picked up, then make sure you talk to Joel, because he's the program director. All right. I definitely will. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So uh, now, with that being said, uh, now people can find your pretty much everything uh, from your music to getting in contact with you through your uh, website. Yep. KirkartMusic.com is the website. Um, Or they can find me anywhere on Facebook, TikTok, um, Instagram, any social media is uh, Scott Kirkart Music. Yep, and they can also find your videos over on YouTube as well, just where I found them at. So, yep, yep, all the videos are on YouTube. Subscribe. Excellent, Scott. I appreciate you taking time out to come join me. Uh, this has been fun, enjoyable, and like I said, I'm definitely going to be adding your music to uh, my playlist here, and I'll be uh, picking up uh, your CDs as they come out. Well, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. You are very welcome. All right. This has been the Midwest Plainsman. And uh, appreciate everyone who tunes in on a regular basis. And if you want to find out more, uh, like I said, you can contact Kurt directly through his website. Or else you can uh, message him on Facebook as well. Yep. Uh, I've got his Facebook uh, profile scrolling down here. Uh, You can get in contact with him that way. Be sure to uh, go and attend his concerts. Uh, they look like a lot of fun. I'm going to make sure that I do when I'm down in that area because uh, I'll definitely be making trips down to Des Moines here this summer. So yeah, excellent. I'll definitely be uh, definitely making the rounds. Sounds great. And if uh, anybody's got any questions for me directly, email me at the Midwest Plainsman at Gmail. Have a great day. We are going to be out of here for the day. <laughs>